Hi. This video, we're going to talk about an alternate formula that's used to calculate torsion and an example calculating some torsion, and then we'll look at it on the computer just to get a sense of what exactly is going on with this curve. Okay, so first of all, an alternate formula. I'm going to go ahead and write down the one I prefer to use. There are several different versions. Um, so torsion equals V cross A. So V and A would be your velocity and acceleration vectors. And then dot A prime. Be sure you write down that A prime carefully. A lot of times I see students um, miss that. And then they uh, take V cross A dot A and they will get zero every time you do that, uh, which is not always the answer. Uh, so V cross A dot A prime and then divided by the magnitude of V cross A. Squared. Um, all right, so I do not expect you to memorize this formula. Uh, I will provide this to you on the unit exam that you will have coming up. Um, so your instructor, it would be up to them whether they choose to have you memorize that formula or not, but I ask students not to memorize that formula, but to be able to use it. All right, so that's an alternate formula. Uh, there would be a little bit of work to show that that's equivalent to the definition of torsion, um, but this is easier to calculate than going through that arc length parameter. All right, so we're going to look at a specific example here. Um, so we are going to do, I just chose one that would be fairly easy to calculate. So we could practice the formula and interesting to look at on the computer. Um, so cosine of 2t, t, and sine of 2t. All right, so uh, this is not an arc length parameterization of a curve. At this point, you should be able to describe this curve pretty easily without having to do too much calculation. This is a helix of radius 1 with evenly spaced coils. Uh, it goes in the direction of the positive y-axis. Uh, this is an increasing function of t, and it in this y uh, function is constant rate of increase, so dy dt is 1. So as we move along that, uh, those coils will have constant change in y. So evenly spaced coils, radius 1 from the amplitude on these two trig functions. And then it might also be worth thinking about the period of these two trig functions. Uh, so the period of these trig functions is pi which means that an interval of 0 to pi will take you one revolution around that helix. Um, so it's helpful sometimes to imagine what the curve looks like, even if you don't draw it or look at it on the computer. And this one's pretty straightforward that you should be able to do that at this point. All right, we're going to go ahead and calculate torsion on this one. This is pretty straightforward on this one. I do have another video where it's a more complicated example calculating torsion. Um, all right, so V is our derivative. You do have to be a little careful with chain rule here. So negative 2 sine 2t, two 1, and 2 cosine 2t. Uh, so that gives me my V. I also need A. I've mentioned before, uh, but this is a problem where it's especially important that you label your things here so that you don't just have some vector here that's unlabeled. Right? So it's important that you label these so that when you go to calculate your dot products or cross products, you're using the right vectors for that. Um, all right, so uh, the second derivative of my original function, or the derivative of this, again, I have some chain rule going on here. So uh, I will have negative 4 cosine 2t and 0, and negative 4 sine 2t. I will want to do a cross product of those two vectors. We'll do that uh, in a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and write down my a prime, or the jerk vector. You might remember from Calc 1 that the third derivative of position with respect to time is jerk. I, we probably don't want to label that j for some obvious reasons if we're working with vectors, but uh, a prime here. Um, so these derivatives, again, be careful with your positives and negatives as you take these derivatives. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, but because I already have the minus sign out front, and 0. And then here we'll have negative 8 cosine 2t. 
Okay, so rather than trying to do all this calculation at once, I would kind of pay attention to the little individual pieces that I need to calculate and then put them all together here in my um, torsion calculation at the end. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and calculate V cross A. So we'll set up our matrix. Um, so again, making sure you grab the correct vectors here. So negative 2 sine 2t, two 1, and 2 cosine 2t. Two and then my a vector, negative 4 cosine 2t, and 0, and negative 4 sine 2t. And so when I do that cross product uh, in the i component, I will have minus 4 sine 2t minus 0. And then in the j component, don't forget the minus sign from the plus minus plus on this determinant. And then here I will have 8 sine squared 2t minus negative or plus 8 cosine squared 2t. So there's a Pythagorean identity in there. So that all simplifies to just 8. You can write that out in a couple of steps if you want to. If you do simplification in your head, make sure you're doing it correctly, because if you don't do it correctly, it's going to mess up everything else. Um, and then the k component, I will have 0 minus negative, so positive, 4 cosine 2t. Okay, so there's my v cross a. I need the magnitude of v cross a. And I also need to take that V cross A and dot it with A prime. And then once I do that, it's just a matter of putting everything into my formula here. All right, so over here, I'll go ahead and calculate my magnitude of V cross A. Uh, all right, so we're going to have square root of, uh, at this point, you maybe can do some of this simplification in your head, knowing what to expect. Again, if you're going to do it in your head, do it right. Um, but I'm going to have all of these components squared and the sum of them. So uh, from this term, this component squared and the sum added to this component squared, I will have 16 sine squared t plus 16 cosine, 16 sine squared 2t plus 16 cosine squared 2t, which will just be 16. And then the negative 8 squared will be 64. So I end up with square root of 80. Um, maybe you want to simplify that if you want your answer simplified. Maybe you want to simplify that. Um, so there are some perfect squares that you can take out of there. Uh, 16 times 5 is 80. So you can rewrite that as 4 square root of 5. Um, so I'm going to use that for my denominator, uh, my v cross a dot a prime. So I'm going to take my v cross a vector that's here and dot that with a prime. Again, make sure you're grabbing the right vectors here. So here's my a prime and here's my v cross a. So I'm going to dot product these two vectors. So here I'll have a negative 32 sine squared 2t plus 0 plus negative 32 cosine squared 2t. So again, maybe you write out some steps for that, but having done enough of these problems, maybe you can simplify that Pythagorean identity in your head. So you're just going to get negative 32 from that dot product. Um, okay, so then it's just a matter of putting that all into my answer here for torsion. So torsion is um, v cross a dot a prime, so negative 32, divided by the magnitude of v cross a squared. So I've got my magnitude of v cross a in a couple different forms. It actually might be more useful to me here to think about that as square root of 80, because then when I square it, I just get 80 on the denominator here. Uh, and we can simplify that a little bit. Uh, there's a 16 that goes into both of those, so negative 2 fifths for my torsion on this curve. So we've got a negative torsion on this curve. There are a few places in this problem where things simplified very nicely. I had some Pythagorean identities a couple places. Um, so, you know, in general, that doesn't always happen. You may not get a constant 
for your answer. You might have a variable function. There's another video where I do this and I have a variable function for my answer and then we talk about it at different points on the curve what's happening there. But uh, I want to look at this one on the computer and really just kind of talk about the idea that we have a negative torsion here and how we might understand from looking at the graph and thinking about the T and B vectors moving, how we might visualize what it means to have a negative torsion. So I'm going to go over here to the computer. All right, so here on the computer, I have graphed uh, the space curve. So I went into Calcplot 3D and got rid of the default graph that was there and added a space curve. I typed in my three uh, functions for the X, Y, and Z for the curve. I set my interval of T to go from negative two pi to two pi, which will actually be four revolutions of this curve, remembering because that 2t that's inside those trig functions, that changes the period on those trig functions. So uh, you'll have one revolution every interval of pi. So this will be uh, four revolutions. Made my number of steps big enough that I got a nice smooth looking curve. I put a couple of orientation arrows on there. And then I'm going to, I want to look at the t and b vectors. So I'm going to go to the curve settings here, this little wheel. And right now it's on the default settings. Uh, trace point and trace vector, I want to leave those there. I don't really want to look at the velocity and acceleration vectors. So I'm going to get rid of those. Uh, you can leave them on there, but they're a little distracting. And then I'm going to click on this box that says show the whole T and B frame. So that will show me all these things, unit tangent, unit normal, unit binormal vectors. And then the three planes formed by those three vectors. It makes like a little coordinate system almost, traveling coordinate system. T and B labels, so it will label each of those vectors. And then the T and B equations approximated will be given uh, at the top of my screen here. So uh, I'm going to click the X on that. And then I'm going to check this box uh, so that we can trace. We started here at T equals zero. You see the T and B frame uh, at that point. So the T vector purple is tangent to the curve and one unit long. You can look at the scale on those axes to see that that appears to be one unit long. Uh, the n vector is on the concave side of that curve. So where that helix is at, at t equals zero, the concave side is pointing straight toward the origin. So that n vector on this curve is just pointing straight toward the origin at that point. Uh, and then t cross n, you should be able to kind of get your right hand up there and think about that t cross n, that b vector is pointing in the direction it's pointing. All right, and then I can drag the little dot or have it animate, but I want to just talk a little bit about what's going to happen, uh, what we expect to happen as we watch that happen. So as I increase my input, the, the little t value for these uh, functions, We'll move along the curve here in the direction of the increasing parameter, in the direction of motion. My t vector will remain tangent to the curve. When we're up here at the top of the curve, where my cursor is, the n vector will be pointing downward. So on the top of the curve, that n vector is always on the concave side of the curve. And if you can visualize where your t vector and your n vector would be, then you can use your right hand rule to visualize where the b vector would be. So just thinking about taking that cross product, right hand rule, t, cross n will give that b vector, it'll be pointing backwards, kind of where I just moved my cursor there. Uh, and so we can kind of think about what that should look like as we move along those different par parts of the curve here. All right, so there's what it looks like as we move along. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about torsion and why torsion is negative. And so you could look really at any place on the curve, but I think here kind of as it makes, as it rounds the bottom of this loop, it's a little bit easier to see right there, just on this particular curve. Um, so if we look at where the T and B vectors are right there, and I want you to focus on the B vector and how that B vector changes. So right now the B vector is kind of pointed downward, and as we rotate along there, that B vector starts to be pointed more upward as we come along there. So from going downward to more upward, uh, you can see how that B vector changes, that that B vector is rotating toward where N was, toward where N was. The, when I did the example with the football, the B vector was rotating away from N, but here the B vector is rotating toward where the N vector was. If you look at how B changes as we move along a little piece of the curve here. 
it's rotating toward where the n vector was, which means that the dBds vector will be pointing toward n, not exactly along n, but toward n. And so dBds, dBds is not a vector we see here. We're imagining which direction it would point. dBds would be pointing toward n or aligned somewhat with n. So that dot product between dBds and n would be positive because they would form an acute angle. And so the dot product dBds dot n would be positive. But remember on that definition of torsion, there's a minus sign out front that changes the sign on that. Uh, so this one is a negative torsion where you've got this rotation of B toward where that N vector was. And uh, the couple of examples we've looked at with the football and here, uh, the rotation is the same along all the parts of the curve. The B vector is rotating either toward N or away from N. But certainly if you think about some kind of object moving through space, it might change the direction it rotates uh, as it moves along that curve. So you could certainly have a curve where you've got negative torsion on some parts of the curve, zero torsion on other parts, and then positive torsion on other parts of the curve. So we'll look at some examples of that later, a little bit more complicated kind of motion. Um, but when you do some calculations, it might be helpful to you after you've done the calculations in your homework to be able to make sure you're interpreting your answer correctly, to go ahead and put it into Calcplot 3D and look at that T, N, and B vector and think about how the motion of those vectors relates to whatever answer you get from calculating. So, uh, so you want to be able to calculate and interpret your answer on problems like this.